quiet seaside town, an evil lain to rest centuries ago, has risen. An abandoned fortress deep in the swamp holds a secret that could save the village or destroy it. Now, a band of adventurers sets out to dig up the wounds of the past and bring the light of day to the roots of ruin. This is Tabletop Gold. Hello, friends, and welcome to Tabletop Gold, episode 112. My name is Lars Castine. I'm the Golden Tyrant. I'm excited to have you here today for this recording, just as I am excited to have the following people. Robin Lang. Good that time. Zoe Chernikoff. Hello, good that time. Armat Humphreys. Good that time and every time. And David the Tin Man Chernikoff. Good that time, good this time. Good that time, everybody. Listen, this episode is coming out on, it's either early August right now or late July. Who's to say? But, but it's summertime. There's summer stuff happening right now. Let's talk. Let's talk about one of the specialties of the time of year. It's uh, ice cream. I don't know if you're familiar with ice cream. It's a cold treat that people enjoy. Lots yeah. of different flavors, lots of different varieties. Not the same as gelato. For the sake of this conversation, here's a twist. I'm going to put gelato under the umbrella of ice cream. What? Oh, a hot take. Totally different churning process. Why don't you put ice cream under the umbrella of gelato? Hmm? Yeah, okay. They can share an umbrella. No problem. All right. It's a shared umbrella. It's a, sh it's a shared <laughs> umbrella. They're cozy. They're, you know, they're kissing cousins. They know what's going on. <laughs> the, um, the thing that I want to ask is, what is your least favorite cold treat? Froyo, Next. ice cream. Okay, so David, <laughs> David says Froyo. Any particular flavor of Froyo? Like, what's your? What, help me out here. Tell me, tell me a story about Froyo. Why, why don't? What is the story? I'll, I'll tell you a story about Froyo. Imagine ice cream. Now imagine it's sour for some reason. Great. Yeah. It sounds great. Sounds fabulous. Oh, you're talking like straight up Pinkberry Froyo. Like the I'm so glad. Flavor. That we took this delicious, delicious thing and made it sour for some fucking reason. <laughs> I, the whole thing is, has just been completely lost on me for my entire, entire life. It, it's just like a worse version of a, it's like, it's like, hey, um, we could have toast or we could have wet toast. Like, <laughs> why, why did you do that? Have you ever had Froyo, like Pinkberry, like the proper, like yogurt that has been frozen with chopped mangoes and strawberries on top i've had pink berry before and pink berry's better than uh, i i don't think tcby exists anymore so that's why i'm just going the country i just googled it and it does seem to still be a still thing because my brain left. i think there's one left went, in the mall by in the town i grew up in <laughs> like i there's said one left in one mall <laughs> <laughs> it's like blockbuster there's just one lone holdout oh yeah yeah that's that's what they say about the tin man finger on the pulse <laughs> um <laughs> like if you compare that to to pink berry pink berry's definitely better I would argue the reason Pinkberry is better is that they're putting stuff in the frozen yogurt that you can then taste more so than the frozen yogurt. Like their innovation is making it <laughs> taste better than like, it's like it's like um, distracting you from how bad the base well, product like they is. Take it, right. Like it's like Faye that they've taken for it, like proper Greek yogurt. I believe you. I just I, anyway, <laughs> I get it that people like You're not it. much I of just, a yogurt person set aside the frozen thing. Uh, no, that's that's true. I mean, um, I'm I'm fairly lactose intolerant, but I will eat ice cream For anyway. Sure. That I've seen because right, ice cream right. is good enough to be worth yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Fact. Whereas For sure. even if my even if I de digested all of this stuff just fine, I still never would pay money 
for Froyo. If someone gave it to me for free, I might eat it. But the <laughs> idea of going paying the same amount for some worse Oh, it's not the same amount. I, it's more I, I, it's like I it's way just more expensive. It's like, hey, instead of um, something to eat, would you like to chew on this bark? Like, no, I would rather have the good thing that tastes good when I put it, when I eat it. I'm gonna I'm gonna jump the I'm gonna jump the line on this and say that I didn't have an answer for this question when I asked it, but I'm gonna agree with David with no. with one twist. I think that TCBY is like sort of ice cream minus, basically, like that style of ice of frozen Diet yogurt that I that I grew up with. Pinkberry. I find repulsive and I hate it. Like, I don't <laughs> like the way it tastes. I yeah. think yeah, it's. I feel like the TCBY Froyo is just like vanilla soft serve kind of. And yeah. it's, and then it's like, Diet. okay, I'm not, I'm not soft upset serve, at that. Yeah. But, but like when I get Pinkberry, I don't know what the flavor is that they're mixing it in with. It's some unidentifiable flavor <laughs> that I just try to put enough chocolate chips into it. And it's, it's like, I, I don't like it. I hate it. I, I, I genuinely dislike Pinkberry. Well, and and it's Pinkberry, and at least for a while, I've not been to a Pinkberry in a long time. Their whole thing was like, you'd try to put a lot of topping on, but they used to like individually tong out the raspberries. You'd be like, can I have raspberries? And they'd do like four very meticulously. So there's no, you can't hide the flavor then. Well, now you go and you like put it on yeah. yourself and they charge you by weight. Mm. Oh, do they? they oh, yeah. I, I once accidentally got their... like a $16 Froyo. How do they manage <laughs> to weigh you while you're in the restaurant it's very invasive <laughs> the, the, do they do a water displacement you have to sit in a bathtub and they feed you yogurt and however much they water you're like a yes, foie they, gras goose with pink they charge you by density um armat how about you uh what's your least favorite frozen treat you, you know i i struggle to name a frozen treat that i don't enjoy quite honestly i'm just like flavor you don't like not really i'm pretty easy when it comes to like if it's sugary and cold and like it tastes good i'm gonna put it in my face you know like our matt humphreys i love you (laughs) (laughs) i mean i'm lactose intolerant too but i've recently just gone back to ben and jerry's because it tastes good good. (laughs) it's very good we all lactose intolerant on this call and i i'm a little bit i'm recreationally lactose intolerant (laughs) Lars, I remember, I don't remember what episode it was, but it was maybe like, you know, 40 or something. Mm -hmm. You had a thing about um, how people couldn't tell Armat and me apart. And (laughs) listeners, if for some reason you've gotten this far and you're still having that trouble, I'm the guy who cuts Lars off to talk shit about Froyo. And (laughs) Armat is the guy who every frozen treat in every flavor is a okay with it. That is the the difference right there. I don't don't know why they call them treats. He's truly our Matt. He's he's of the people, for the people. (laughs) people. As long as they're a frozen treat, I'm for them. Yes. (laughs) I'm actually campaigning right now for the frozen (laughs) treat vote, so... Would you consider frozen grapes a frozen treat? How dare you? How? Frozen grapes are lovely <laughs> no. when it's really hot outside. I've never Actually, had I it. bet they're Try great. It. I've never tried it, frozen but I will. But we're, not, we're not here to talk about things that yeah. we do like. Let's Zoe, see. what is something that you don't like? All right. So I've, as with <laughs> ice creams I do like, I've got a whole logic tree here. So my gut answer is um, I do, I, I'm do. i generally big on Ben & Jerry's, but someone here has to shit on a Ben & Jerry's flavor. We can't be going around just all liking, you know, whole brand. Um, I do not like... Uh, I do not like maraschino cherries, and I do not like Cherry Garcia ice cream, and I basically do not like a cooked cherry of any sort. Yeah. Not gonna, I'm with you, Zoe. Gonna, I'm with you. I can't do that. Yeah. Basically, yeah. all other Ben & Jerry's flavors... So that's, but that's just like, I don't really like cooked cherries is what's going on there. Um, I don't <laughs> care for ice cream that is peppermint flavored that is pink. It's got, you got to have green. If it's a mint chip or a peppermint, I want it to be green or white. Like white for an all natural, green for a fake. Don't give me pink peppermint ice cream. I'm not here for that. And last of all, a little bit surprising. <laughs> I don't really like just a plain chocolate ice cream because it is never chocolatey enough. You can give me like a, a chocolate truffle or like an extra chocolatey situation that I'm here for. But your average chocolate ice cream is like a milk toast, not chocolatey enough situation. Zoe, the amount of truth that you just said yeah. in such a tight yeah. tight amount of time is shocking to me. She does that, man. Oh, my God. <sighs> I hadn't thought about the chocolate thing, but I think I, I think I agree. I was so convinced. I was so convinced by the first two that I'm ready to go with you on All this right. chocolate thing. I think. You know, I do like a Wendy's Frosty, though, so I don't know what oh, that does to this. Yeah, Hell yeah, you like a Wendy's Frosties are great. Like great. a Wendy's Frosty. <laughs> yeah. I mean, come on. 
Yeah, with French fries dipped in them? Oh, obviously. I've I heard mean, that's amazing. I never was brave yeah, enough to salty, try it. Do, oh, it do it. Do it. Do it. So good. Do it. Ooh. I th- yeah. do think Wendy's has the best French fries of the fast food. Mm. Um, mm. All right. Hot take. Did some cold takes. Now we're getting into hot takes. Hot yeah. takes. <laughs> anyway, at least compared to like McDonald's and Burger King, I would take a Wendy's above those two. <laughs> I want to talk tears. about I want to talk about French fries in another episode. Okay, so yeah, no, we'll save it. Yeah, we for save, sure, we gotta save it. Love, We're gonna make so many. This is gonna make it. I can do an hour on. Yeah, French fries. exactly. Yeah, I have a feeling. Robin, what is your least favorite cold treat? So when I was a kid, we would go to this town in the mountains of Pennsylvania. You're laughing because I said because when you asked me this question before, something immediately came to mind. I was like, I have a story for this. Yeah, you sure do have a story. Let's go. Well, well, listener, it all starts (laughs) when I was in the womb. (laughs) (laughs) So we'd go to this town in Pennsylvania that had, there's very little to do there. It's all around, it's around a lake in the mountains. But the store that's been there for like 50 years is the sweet shop. Aww. And you go to the sweet shop and you get your penny candy. When I was a kid, it was like, you know, di- or quarter candy. Or not, I'm sorry, nickel candy. Now Five it's $8 candy. They don't even serve the candy anymore. It broke my heart last time I went. Aww. But they also had, the main thing was ice cream. And they had a challenge when I was a kid, which is like the kitchen sink challenge. It was, I think, 36 scoops of ice cream. Whoa. And you could do it with someone else. But if, and if you finished, you would get your picture up on the wall and my cousins had their pictures up on the wall and I was so jealous and I came, went up with my friend one summer she came with us for a couple days and I was like we are doing this and one of the flavors ended the challenge for me we could okay. not get past okay. tea berry has anyone heard of tea berry ice cream I don't know no, I, don't I don't know what that is I don't know I I've feel like this is a made up thing tea berry is <laughs> tea, you can That's get tea, tea berries grow wild and but the tea berry ice cream essentially tastes like a mix between Pepto Bismol and peppermint. No, gross. No, <laughs> I don't want that. And it's bright yeah. pink. So Zoe, when you were saying before, you don't like pink yeah, ice cream. Yeah, this is we're into fake pink <laughs> peppermint land. I, yeah. I and back you up a hundred percent. It's a Pepto Bismol peppermint flavor, and gross. They put like two or three scoops of that in it, and I hit that, what? and I was like, oh no, nope, can't get past two spoonfuls of this. It's so foul. And so not we, even for your photo on the wall? We failed the challenge. We did not get our photo on the wall. We could, the two of us could not get through however many giant scoops of ice, like whatever this insane bowl of ice cream was. I think most people yeah. do it with like four people. <laughs> 36 scoops of ice cream is impressive. I, I don't know if it was 36. It was either way, it was an insane amount of ice cream and we could not do it. It was far too much, but mainly because of that stupid Pepto-Bismol ice cream. Yeah. So yeah, I don't like so that is one of the foulest um, sweet treats I've ever come across. You know, things. Speaking of things that aren't yummy to eat alone, uh, podcasts. Uh, I'd like to say it's it's nice to share podcasts, and the the best way to make sure that the podcast that you're enjoying gets shared by other people is to leave reviews for that podcast on your favorite podcast app. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we got a review on Podcast Addict from Grave Maw, who says very nice things about our show, but then adds, "Incidentally, I've started using Good That Time in work meetings as my company <laughs> spans all time zones." Yes, hey, I I think that's a great usage. You know, thereof. that's so that's so well observed. We we do Good That Time because we know that we're talking to people asynchronously. That's real time, but. Across time zones, right? Like that's that's a right. that's a step up. That's a that's very sharp. Guys, we're making fetch happen. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what I'm going to say: If you enjoy good that time, integrate it into your life and let us know how it goes via whatever means you want to get in touch with us. Okay? Yes. Sure. Right. That's the one. Yeah. Please. Okay. <laughs> and uh, with that all having been said, how about if we move on to our game? Yes. How about it? Heck Let's yeah. Do it. Your explorations of the laboratories on the sixth floor below Gauntlet have brought you to an unexpected area. It's a day spa filled with crumbling massage tables in alcoves behind tattered curtains. You're currently standing at the entrance to this spa, 
in front of four changing rooms rigged up to some kind of mechanism that can open all four doors simultaneously at the pull of a lever. This area is filled with a sickening sort of rotting smell, and the spaces beneath these changing room doors reveal claws insistently reaching out and scraping, trying to be released from these rooms. You're moments away from ripping the first of these doors off the hinges to get at whatever waits inside as a heavy blue curtain on the far end of the spa wavers restlessly. So let's just pick up from there. What are we doing? All right, I want to start by making an appeal to be able to enter this combat raging. <laughs> if we know it's if we know it's coming, like why would Mag wait to look at the fucking thing? Wow, I'm I am cursing like a sailor tonight. Aren't we all raging when we enter a changing room? I feel like all of us. Should <laughs> I'm usually be able raging to... raging when I leave one. Um, okay, fair. That's true. David, I'm going to have to insist that Mag enter and then leave the changing room in order to get the rage going. I'm sorry, but... Uh, nah, I get it. None of these right, things But yeah, David, I think it makes sense. I think it makes sense in terms of the narrative that we're doing, but I also think it makes sense mechanically. I've told you that you can see these creatures that are trying to scrape at you and get at you. Like, I think the rules for rage say that you have to be able to see somebody. You can see these creatures, or you can see at least the, the claws you know, reaching up and scraping at the door to try to get to you. Obliged and agreed. It's clearly something back there. What's the next order of business? Ripping this thing off its hinges and then rolling athletics for initiative. <laughs> okay, so here's what I'm going to say. I'm not going to make you roll a force open. This is... Mag is extremely strong. This door is is something that she can, I think, pretty easily grab a hold of a handle and rip it off. So I'm not going to ask you for an athletics check to force the door open. So let's just, just tell me how that works. Tell me how Mag ripping the door open goes off and I'm not going to make you roll for it. Yeah. Um, she grabs a hold of the door up by where that, uh, you know, hinge point would be. And she just, she gives one really major league um, yank on the thing. <laughs> Pulls it toward her. Oh, I guess she's raging, so it would sound more like, ha! <laughs> <laughs> um, I love that. Uh, <laughs> in, in her, uh, and, and she's kind of holding it in her left hand while in her right hand the Warhammer is ready to strike. And that, that yank cracks the door apart. It's these vertical wooden slats that make up the door to this changing room, and you, you pull it apart. It splinters apart as you yank it First, you yank the, the left side of the door off, and then the rest of it just sort of twists off of the hinges. And each of these vertical, like almost like bamboo slats, splinters and breaks, revealing first a blast of this stench that you have been consumed with. Oh, no. And then it reveals to you, you visually see the creature behind this Ooh. door and oh it's God. a a live sort of uh, scrambling humanoid creature with in insanely sharp claws on its hands and feet with this long like ribbon like tongue dangling out of its mouth with glowing eyes peering at you as it sort of pounces as it leans back against the back corner of this changing room and just screams wordlessly, just goes, ah! And with that, I need you to all please roll for initiative. Yeah. yeah. Roll for initiative. Roll for initiative. Oh, it doesn't want to talk? <laughs> <laughs> um, these things rule. The art for that is so awesome. It's uh, it's pretty gnarly, for sure. I'm going to say that this creature looks something... It's clearly undead, as you look at it. It's got, like, this blue rotting flesh hanging off of it. It seems similar to, but not exactly, like, the ghouls that you faced on the third oh, thank God for undead. floor of the... 
dungeon. I'm rolling stealth on the theory that Ao knew this was coming and is tucked around the corner, unless you tell me I can't. Um, no, that's fine with me. I'm going to make the case for rolling with athletics on account of having just ripped the door off. Absolutely. Of Absolutely. So how did everybody do on initiative? I'm going to start with Robin. Uh, so Trill only ended up with 18. Okay. Maybe Mag ripped the door off so forcefully and so quickly that Trill was caught unprepared. How did Ao do, Zoe? Pretty good. Feeling ready. I think she's on the look for Jafaki at 31. Okay. So what that means is that Ao is hiding so, so well that as Mag rips the door open and sees these glowing eyes coming off of this foul smelling humanoid, this creature sees Mag, doesn't see Ao. Armat, how did Istan do? He did okay. He got a 12 on the die for a 22. Um, so my guess is he was more or less ready, but maybe just started thinking of javelins in the second before <laughs> no, uh, the no door javelins. came off. Hey, it happens to the best of us. Yeah. I get it. <laughs> and uh, David, how did Mag do with her athletics-driven check? 25 for Mag. So, you know, clearly ready for a fight, maybe not perfectly poised since she's, uh, you know, her mo momentum is taking her backward from destroying the door. So here we are. It's the top of round one. And here's the story. You are all in the vestibule with these four uh, changing rooms gathered around you. Mag, Isthen, and Trill are bunched up right by this open door. And Ao is hiding just around the corner in this hallway leading deeper into the spa. We're going to kick things off with Ao. Ao, who's disguised as a Dreshkin, by the way. Ao, who has like a metallic spider arms coming out of her Morlock body at this point. This creature, this undead creature that you're looking at in this waiting room as it starts to jump forward towards Mag does have cover from you because you are around the corner from it. So just keep that in mind as uh, you decide what it is that you would like to do right now. I think Ao's attitude here is basically next. Like, this is not what she's looking for. She wants to dispose of it and move on. Um, so she, from what we know about undead, previous undead creatures we've met, uh, uh, they're immune to what kinds of damage or we don't know. The thing you mainly know about undead is that they tend to be immune to negative damage. Oh, okay. because that tends to heal them, yeah. and they tend to take damage from, from positive damage. Undead creatures also tend to be immune to death effects, so things that instantly kill them tend not to mm -hmm. uh, not to affect them. There, there's a garden variety of other things, but those are the big ones. So a Ao just does a quick... TKP hurling some rock debris that's in this room at this thing, even though it's got cover in an effort to, to hit it while it's flat-footed to her. Okay, and what kind of damage do you want to do with that TKP? Let's do bludgeoning damage. So a, a big chunk of rock flies over Mag's head around this corner. How did you do with your attack roll? 20 to hit. 20 to hit with the creature having cover from you is a hit on the button. Whew. Nice. Um, that's 21 points of damage. That's absolutely a massive blow as it reels back away from Mag. Uh, and she's going to recall knowledge real quick just to see if she can figure out what it is now that she can see it. Uh, give me a blind religion roll, please. How about like anything other than that? Okay, sure. Go for it. Is it made of stars? Is it? Um, an yeah, it's a, check? there's a constell. It, it looks a lot like a <laughs> constellation to you. So I just got this secret check from Ao, and she recognizes this as a ghoul-like creature known as a ghast. Mm, ghastly. What she knows about this creature is that it is, as an undead thing, is immune to paralyzed effects, but also is vulnerable to fire. Or maybe one of those two things is false because my religion check is horrible. <laughs> it could be one of those two things being false. Um, I missed something at the beginning of your turn. Would you mind giving me this fortitude save that I just put into chat as you reel over from the stench of this thing? Uh, it's a 16. And that's a success. Again, on the button. Uh, you got one more You got one more action. Uh, no, because TKP is two and... Knowledge oh, and recall well. knowledge. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So so Mag feels the whoosh of this chunk of rock flying right by her head, and it is now her turn. 
All right, I'll start with that fort save. Thank you. Also a 20, um, sorry, also a six on the die for Mag, so that's a 20 to save. Fortitude, a great save for Mag. You you managed to wash the effect of this stench away, no problem. Hey, right. I'm going to recall knowledge as well. <laughs> no. Um, I'm going to hit it with the hammer. When, if not now, is it a scenario when you should hit the ghast? You know, hit the ghast. Really? Put Pedal the, to the metal. Exactly. Jump in... Jump a Jack Flash. It's a ghast, um, ghast, ghast. It's a ghast, <laughs> ghast, ghast. Oddly enough, this guy's name is Jumpin' Jack Flash. It's so weird how that works out. Yeah, there we go. Love it. And that is a 30 to hit. That's a critical hit. You find a, a weak point on, on the ghast and just blast your Warhammer through it. For 32 <laughs> damage. Okay, interesting, interesting, interesting. So Mag rips the door off the hinges, sees this creature, over her shoulder this rock comes through, and then Mag, with one swipe of her warhammer, smashes it into the side of this changing room wall, and it is destroyed. It's like whack a ghast. <laughs> yes, this is going to be whack a ghast because we're going to go do this three more times, yep. and every time we do it, it's going to be just as satisfying. <laughs> well, maybe you, maybe you won't do it three more times, David, because as that happens, oh. you hear a sound at the far western end of the hallway, mm. and you see, you turn your head, and you can see that mm. that curtain has been opened, mm. and there is a creature walking down the hallway towards you. Oh. Ooh. Oh. Like a wrestler. You recognize him as a skulk, similar to that woman that you uh, rescued from the, the kitchen Back in the in the back of the warped fruit oh, tavern, right. the no hands lady. Yeah, exactly. Motley man takes hands. Exactly. This gentleman though has uh, gray skin. He's mostly hairless, which is typical of skulks. But he's wearing clothes suitable for brawling. He's got these small shorts, and he's wearing a vest. Very Greco-Roman. <laughs> yes, very <laughs> Greco-Roman. Agreed. Wrestling, that is. He has this uh, beautiful medal around his neck. And the word Victor, V-I-C-T-O-R, appears as a glowing sigil across his forehead. And he throws the curtain to the side and he starts stomping towards you. And he just says, uh, what the hell is this racket? Who who the hell are you? Um, I guess Ao is closest to him because she's in the hallway kind of at the, the doorway to this thing. Yeah. So she... Skitters around. I'm trying to do a mental calculation. The Morlocks, so far as we know, have only ever spoken under common, right? Yes, generally speaking, except for Agriel. Um, I think she decides, fuck it. This guy's not serious enough to need to like pass muster or or, or to like fully play into the Morlock thing. So so she speaks in, you know, not not under common, just regular. I don't. Want, what do we call it? Common. Common. Yeah. Over common, if you will. Over common. Yes. Uh, she looks at him and she says, are you a perfect soldier? And he, uh, he looks very confused and for a moment as he thinks this question over and he's, he nods his head slowly at you and he says, oh, it's a, it's a test. I get it. Okay. (laughs) Okay. And he looks, he looks at the, at the, at, at AO, the Dreshkin, and he points his finger and he, he smiles and he says, you know, I've never seen them bring in one of you guys that can talk before, but this is a, this is amazing. Okay, sure. I'll play along. Let's see. Am I a perfect soldier? Yes, of course I'm a perfect soldier. And, uh, and I'm imagining, uh, and he winks at, at AO, the Dreshkin. <laughs> I'm imagining that that means that you brought these three other perfect soldiers <laughs> with you to uh, to fight to fight me. So I fight you, and then I pass the test, right? You know, she <laughs> she cocks her dreshkin head. There's an even bigger battle than that. But you're a fighter. Right. 
Yes, <laughs> but you know that I'm a fighter, right? Because you, wait, did you not bring, okay, I'm sorry. I feel like I'm failing the test right now. No, 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 you're doing, and she sort of narrows the you're doing perfectly. Okay, hold on a second. And he sort of <laughs> crosses his arms and stands there for, for like 20 straight seconds, not saying anything. It's then in the middle of that goes, oh, great. Well, that's going to detract some points right there. Pausing is not good on the test. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. No, I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. Um, there's a bigger battle um, after this, which I will face after I beat you up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. You're on the right track, but you're not quite there yet. First, you have 30 seconds Tell me how you came to be here, and don't lie. This is part of the test. Okay. I think on that, I'm going to ask for a uh, a deception check from from Ao to see if if like compelling him to to give that information is uh, is going to work. Maybe I was born for deception checks. <laughs> Maybe I did it blind, so I don't know. But you can tell me. Yeah. Uh, so you did that blind deception check, and you succeeded. And he says, okay, right. So I'm going to tell 29, you. 29, 28, okay, so go I, faster. I have 20 to tell you about myself. <laughs> right, yes. Okay, um, you know me, obviously. I'm Mershin. Uh, you've heard of me. I'm a pretty big deal mm -hmm, around mm -hmm. here. The prize fighter, the, the, the fists of the underdark, or the, the dark lands, sorry, wrong intellectual property. <laughs> uh, the fists of the dark lands, that's what they call me. Uh, you, of course, know me. I was a big fish in a small pond where I grew up. I spent a lot of time on the brawling circuit, you know, beating ass. And then eventually I beat the ass of everybody in town and uh, nobody could stand up to me. So I left and I started looking for uh, to make my name, fame and fortune, uh, somewhere to be tested, somewhere to grow as a fighter. And um, and and it's that is uh, and he's like looking at the Dreshkin for approval. He's like, and now I'm here to beat the to beat the ass of everyone who thinks they're tough because that the, it pisses me off, man. It really pisses me off when people think they're really tough, when people are acting like they're trying to show off like they're all that, but they're not all that. So that's my thing is I beat your ass because you think you can beat my ass. Um, Trill, as he's finishing this, whispers to Ao, find out if he's like testing the different constructs that the Sugathi are making. Ao hears that and she looks at him and she goes, have you been through the process? Have I been through the process? I mean, wait, you know that. Right. Okay. This is part of the test too. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Answer honestly. Okay. Um, is this like a marketing situation? You just want me to tell you my whole thing? To... That's right. We need the byline for the poster. The byline for the poster. Mm -hmm. I guess that makes sense. Okay. Um, <laughs> well,. No, I haven't gone through the process yet, right? Uh, so my que my search for suitable competition brought me here, and then the worm things that are your boss, uh, they're here too. They've they've got a bunch of these like crazy beasts and stuff like that, and then I pound the shit out of them. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so, so then every time I win, you reward me because nobody at home respected me, but you do, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that that means that you guys are doing a great job finding talent, and that's obviously what I have, which you're seeing right now due to this test that I'm doing great at. Uh, I beat the asses of everything you throw at me, so you like what you see, and because of that, you're going to do the process on me, which is going to make me even stronger, right? And then when that's done, I'm going to head out of here with my new skills, and I'm going to be really uh, strong and scary, and people are going to enjoy 
right? Seeing me beat everybody else's ass outside of here <laughs> when I'm uh, when I leave, and that's when my career, right? That's when my <laughs> career is going to take off. Yes. Did I? That's what I yes. did. I do it. You've, did I win? You've did thought, I pass? You've thought through the whole plan, but you know why they haven't done it to you yet, right? The process. Yeah, because I haven't passed this test yet. Well, you have. Have I passed that? Have I passed it? Am I done? There's two more parts to the test. Okay, good. There may be subparts. We'll see how the parts go. <laughs> okay. So far, you're at like a BB plus. Do we use uh, alphanumeric grading around here? A BB plus. Yeah, like pretty good. It's it's fine. B, B plus. Oh, it's like B slash B plus. That's right. I imagine also that during this whole time, Trill, Mag, and Isthin are like standing behind Ao, Ao the Dreshkin, like trying to look tough. Got lots of arms yes. crossed. Yeah, exactly. And, like, chins <laughs> nodding. Yeah, yeah um, Magdalene sharpening a hammer, if that's a thing. And, and um, <laughs> oh, I've, oh, I've, well, go ahead, David. I have one quick. Thing yeah, no, I just want to like. I'm wondering if we could get this dude to come along with us that's, and help fight Jafak. That's where I'm headed. That's all right, totally all right. where I'm at. So, so Ao, Ao, like, Ao's eyes narrow and a sort of like she's honed in on making use of this this guy. She's like, "You're right. You've you've passed part one A. You're on to part two. You don't you don't even have to do parts one B and one C. You want a fair fight, right? R yeah. No, I just thought it. Well. I'm I mean, you have to prove yourself in the ultimate of... fair fight. No, you're not going to fight three of us. You're going to fight one person, the one person whose attention you need to catch to get him to do the process. The one person whose attention I need to get in Jafaki, order... Jafaki, Jafaki! She gets impatient. Oh, like the big worm, like the worm with yes. all the, the He only turns people in who, who challenge him to a duel. Have you not heard this? You really haven't gone far enough in the test. Okay, so I'm going to ask another uh, deception check from Ao here to try to convince him the idea of Jafaki wants him to go in and try to beat Jafaki up. Can we aid? Sure. I guess it's deception. I don't want to aid deception. Um, I think Trill can aid deception. Like really okay, so how is Trill aiding? What is Trill doing? Trill's in the background kind of being a bit of a hype person for AO. Um, just really, like, being that, that, that guy in the back is like, yeah, yeah, of course. Like, wait, you didn't understand this? Just, like, no nodding along and speaking along with everything and reinforcing everything AO is saying. Okay. Let's get that aid from AO first. Or, sorry, from, uh, from Trill first. Is this blind? Yes, please. Okay, so I've got an aid check from Trill, and let's see how Ao does on this attempt to lie to this guy to convince him that Jafaki wants him to beat him up. And I just got that blind check from Ao. And he says, Okay, so you're telling me that if I can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the big man, that's going to convince him to do the process on me, to make me even tougher? It's kind of like if, uh, if I can't get by without the process, I don't deserve the process, is kind of what you're saying to me. Wait, did you, did you already know the slogan? You, you already what? knew... Your if you can't get through without the, t whatever, what did you, whatever you just, that's their right. Slogan. If I can't do it without the process, I don't deserve the process. Mm -hmm. Are you kidding me? That's the, that's slogan? it. That's it. Yeah. You're doing so good <laughs> yeah. at this test, man. Yeah. Oh my God. Okay, where's okay. my list of merch ideas. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he leans in on the dreshkin and he's like, this has got to be good enough to bump me up from a B, B plus, right? Like, I've got to be. Oh, yeah. You're like B plus, now. A minus for sure. For sure. Now, where is Javaki again? I mean, it's like up here. I just get so lost in this maze being a stupid Dreshkin whose process didn't go perfectly because you're going to be the perfect soldier. Yeah, these are real confusing, these ro these paths. He's going to make a, a perception check there. He's going to try to, to um, do, a, do a sense motive on you. 
The idea, I think the idea that you're asking him where the thing is, I think is triggering some little bit of like, wait, wait a minute. What? <laughs> so this is a sense motive against your deception DC. That is a 35 that I just rolled. Oh, no. That's Whoa. a bummer. That's really good. This guy's smarter than he seems. Sharp cookie. Uh, I believe yeah. my, well, what do I add to my... Uh, it'll be 10. It'll be your deception plus 10. Well, it's not quite a critical success, but it is a success. Okay. Damn. He says, he says to you, like he, he, he gets the sense that there's something off about you asking him where Jafaki's office is. And he said, he nods for a second and he says, of course I have no idea idea where Jafaki's office is and if I did that would be in violation of the agreement that we made upon me training here so I'm afraid you're going to have to bring show me to where Jafaki is and, and Ao decides to play this off. She's like, that just raised you into a straight A minus. You passed yet another subtest. Oh, yes. Yes. And he just mur- murmurs to himself, I'm going to get the process. I'm going to get the hell out of here. I'm going to roam free around the world and everyone's going to see how good I am. I'm going to go to the <laughs> Aurorium. I'm going to beat a bunch of asses. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Um, Well, I think we get the hell out of here, right? With this guy trailing after us and try to pretend like we know where we're going. (laughs) Sounds good. Yep. Yep. Heck yeah. Yep. And so Ao uh, whistles at... at, um, Mershon. No, not Mershon. um, At the the gang. I'm trying to see who's close. I guess Trill and Mag are closest to the door. And she's like, as you were, back to Jafaki. This young man's ready to prove himself. Uh, and Mag says, Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Great, yes, hop him too. Mm-hmm. Mershon, as he's walking with you at this door, is like, I gotta tell you, that test wound up being, like, completely different from what I thought it was at <laughs> first. <laughs> you know, that's part of how they get you. You know, Chafaki's just so non-traditional. He's, or they're just... <laughs> They're always finding new ways to improve everything. Wait, so who are you three, though? Like, I get the Dreshkin. Are you also going to be the perfect soldier? Oh, well, actually, we are people who... Hold on, let me get this. (laughs) I'm going to say, I'm going to say... This guy might talk to all of you. You might need to lie to him. This could be one of those follow the expert situations where if Ao wants to like help you lie, you can roll, um, you know, you can roll deception following her lead potentially. Well, let me first, I think Trill's deception is pretty good. So that's like almost tricky trying to do that one. Uh, But Trill looks like, no, no, we're not getting the process. We're not good enough to get the process. We're aides. We're just here to kind of support like, like you said, you know, all together we're pretty great and pretty strong, but individually we're nothing like you. So, you know, we're just here. We're evaluators, really. Okay. Um, can you go ahead and give me that uh, that lie? You can use basic action macros, but let's get that lie attempt against this guy. Okay. He's like looking deep in your eyes and like nodding along he's like right your aides because you probably failed the test against Jafaki so now you're like working for them yeah we know he's explained his they've explained their expectations to us so we're really here so that the garbage doesn't have to come in front of Jafaki We, we are separating the wheat from the chaff right and I'm like a big wheat yes the biggest wheat right we call God. them janitors, Ao shouts over her shoulder as she skitters <laughs> on her little metal legs through the door. Okay, so so uh, Mershon, as long as he doesn't talk to anybody else, <laughs> is 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 following along behind Ao and Trill. Yes! Where are you guys going? 
Um, so I think there's a door. So if we go back through the trap door we or the secret door we came through, and then that secret door, there's a door like directly kind of at the end of the hall and pinging it that we haven't gone through yet. I am looking, sure. genuinely looking for what you're pinging. <laughs> Up to the south? Yeah. So it's like just Over it's here. due west of us. So if due we east. go, sorry, due east. So if we go through this do- through the trap door we the secret door we came through right heading off to the east from this viewing chamber that was looking out over the arena and then go due east and he's kind of like walking behind you and he's following you into that that big testing room where the sugathi was fighting the distrachon right yeah. in my mind for some reason we're all whistling hi ho hi ho it's off to work we go from <laughs> snow white I don't know why, but... I get that vibe, for sure. Very cheerful. Yeah, so that door that door that Robin is, is talking about is a door that I previously described to you as looking as though it was some sort of a closet. Like a... Like a... Process, like it's a smaller door that... Uh, sorry, what did, you say, what did you say, David? Like, like, it's a, like it's a closet. Like it's a huge closet where Jafaki runs the process from yeah it's um, like a boss please. it's like a boss closet like a boss closet <laughs> <laughs> yeah but but yeah the door the door that trill sees as she runs into this larger testing room is is a door that she had previously clocked as like a smaller less traveled door leading into what looks like a smaller room I think AO seeing Trill heading towards that is like I- if you need more cleaning supplies then grab them from there <laughs> Trying to like cover so that this guy doesn't catch on to the fact that they have no fucking idea where they're going. Wait, wait a minute. Should I be go? I think I'm not supposed to go in there because. Oh, she's talking to Trill, not to him. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were talking to me. I thought this was part of the test. And I'm, if it were part of the test, I would say I'm not going to go into that door because I'm not here to clean. I'm here to beat. Jafaki's ass. Yeah, right? I needed to go in there because you saw the mess in the room we just went past, so I wanted to go and grab some cleaning supplies to leave it in there to make it easier for the janitors later. You are the janitors, you mean, for yourselves. They just always speak in the third person. Stupid yes. janitors. Yes. <laughs> right. <Okay. laughs> the way, the, honestly, the way that this operation r- is run is fascinating to me. <laughs> Uh, does Trill actually open the door to see what's in there? Yeah, I think Trill's just like, let me just grab a mop or something, and Trill just pokes her head in. Okay, Trill opens the door into the most insane closet you have ever seen in your <laughs> life. Yeah, There's just clutter from ceiling to floor. There's like scraps of wood, furniture, like weird tools, everything at these bizarre angles. The moment you open this closet door, you are looking directly. I, I think, like, I would ask Mag to make a will save potentially <laughs> because the mind that organized this closet is completely alien to any mind that you have ever encountered previously. You get the sense as you, like, just are immediately blasted with this this sense of of is it chaos is it order it's like a like a fractal combination of items sticking through each other and so on that if you were to try to find something of value here it would take a little bit of time and it would take a little bit of work um trill just grabs the closest tool to the door without like any thought and just grabs it and acts as though it's like something that she can use to clean She's like let me just go drop this off back in that room to like try and play it off as though she had she knew exactly what she was doing Okay, I'm going to do a flat check to, to see if you're getting anything like a tool. <laughs> I'm going to call this a DC 10 flat check. It's a mimic. Or DC 11 flat check. And I, I'm rolling it. I rolled a 17. Yeah. So somehow awesome. Trill manages to emerge with like a, uh, a big mop. <laughs> <laughs> And as she pulls the mop out, like a mass of other things <laughs> collapse into the room and a big cloud of dust emerges out of the door after. Never mind that. Right. We'll have to take care of that later as well. Yeah. We'll come back for that. Mag rages and then Mag retches. <laughs> <laughs> the retching and the raging. Yeah. So Mershon is like, okay, so you're leaving. We're getting a. We're sort of doing multiple things at once now. I get it. I get. You know, I we're like on a it. tight schedule. 
Right. All right, so um, we're heading to another door somewhere to the so, east of here. question. Yeah. I think we should let Ao yeah. like, do her thing. Is there... I know that we've got one door that has, like, stairs that seems to be going down that we decide not yeah. to go down. Are there other... Did we forget about another another door that's in that area that this is just Strachan was in? I think there's a yeah. There are the two stairways door. leading up on either side of this uh, this sort of lower part of the laboratory that you're in right now. The only other door that you haven't explored around this area is a double door that is near the teleportation circle that I told you about. Right. And there's the secret door up where we fought the Destrachan and uh, the other Sugathi researcher, right? That goes right. into like the maze around the swamp where we think the Yeah, we've gone is. through that one. But we didn't go very far. Right. Oh, Wait, everyone Everyone is correct. Oh, okay. So, so there's the stairs up, which we think are not it because that's going back, we think, to the level above. There's the double doors. By we didn't the tel- explore the double doors yet, right? No, no. That, so, so that's unexplored, and I think where I'm headed. And then there's going back into the Hydra area and walking around in Africa, I hope. So, so I think Double seeing doors it are as, always important. I was gonna say seeing it as the like next thing. I was like, very good. That will be, uh, that will be a useful tool. Um, and she hops down the ledge to where the distraction was, and and heads with purpose on her little skittery metal legs towards the double doors. And I think that anybody watching Mershon at this point sees that he tenses up as he crosses through this now ethereal stone wall. You get the sense looking at him like he has fought many, many creatures here and he is like on edge to see like, is this part of the test? Are they going to make me fight these guys here? So he's, he is, he, he starts grabbing, um, he starts like flexing his, his arms and like stretching out his fists and things like that. I, I, I'm using words to, that I, to describe physiological processes that, that I don't understand, but he's like trying to like move his arms around. Like he's getting ready for a fight. Like he's, he's ready to be jumped right here. He's warming up. He's warming up, but also you get the sense that he has had to fight tons of creatures in this room. Poor guy. Not yet. Not yet. Ao says, uh, and she goes to the double doors. I think she sort of cast, cast an eye back at Mag and she says to him you stay next to me and and you'll know when the moment is right uh, I mean totally BSing here right like if Jafaki is not through these doors this is all gonna look pretty silly <laughs> but um yeah I so you're, you're you're talking as though these are the, the these are the doors here so I'm gonna say if these are not the doors he's going to get another insight check into Ao the distraction. I think that's, or Ao the Dreshkin. That seems more than fair. But, you know. it, yeah, certainly um, does. So she she pushes the, you know, she kind of pushes on the door and goes to push it open. Actually, first she checks to see if it's, like, locked at all. She's trying, like, you know, she has a quick kind of, like, check to see if she needs to unlock it. Not at all locked, no. Okay. And then she goes to push it open. Okay. So Ao the Dreshkin pushes this door open, and there's a long hallway 10 feet wide receding into the distance no sign of Jafaki whatsoever so he's going to sense Ao's motive to see what's going on with Ao that one is a 28 versus Ao's deception DC how does the success Okay, so success, you can tell whether the creature is behaving normally, but you don't know its exact intentions or what m- magic might be affecting it. Okay, so he he knows that you're not acting normally. So he's starting to get, I think that he would react to that by starting to get afraid. So he's going to shift from being friendly to you, which I think is kind of where we were, to being indifferent to you. He crosses his hands. And he says, wait a minute, hold on. Somebody needs to tell me what's really going on here. You're you're in the middle of the test. This is where you want to pause? Okay, I'm gonna call that either deception or intimidation if you wanna if you wanna play it more that way. Like it sounds like you're kind of threatening him, but also kind of just continuing to lie to him. That's always just lies. Come okay. on, let's be honest. Okay, so I got a lie from you versus his versus his perception DC. And he 
looks at you and he says, okay, I'm not sure I really believe this even is a test. I think that maybe you're just here to kill me, to fight me, to beat me up, to humiliate me. And you dragged me away from my three ghasts that I could have used to beat you up. This is not okay. This is not how we do things here. Trill pipes up. Of course it's not how we do things. You're absolutely right. What are you? It's just a hall. We just have to go down this hall. Okay. So one of the things about failing a lie, which I just got from AO, is that the target doesn't believe your lie and gains a bonus against your attempts to lie for the duration of the conversation. And the target is also more likely to be suspicious of you in the future. So Mershon turns and looks at Trill like, like he's going to take, he like, it's the, can I speak to your manager thing? He turns to Trill because Trill got a critical success earlier, spoilers. <laughs> and he, <laughs> so he, he is leaning on Trill now to get him down, or it's up to Trill to get him down this hallway. Listen, you've been doing great. I can tell that the space that we're in right now, it's got to be triggering for you. You've probably been in here a lot from what I know about vetting people for the process. People who have to get to the process go through this room a lot. We just need to get you down this hall. Are you strong enough to get down this hall, Martian? Okay, so I'm going to call that, if you don't mind... That sounds like more diplomacy-ish than lie to me. So if you want to give me a diplomacy check right. to make a request. Six of one, half dozen the other. Yeah, and I think that he's still friendly to you. So I think this is still above board by the books mechanically. So let's uh, see how that request goes. Okay. So he looks at you and he says, okay. I'm going to give you one more chance. I think something's fishy around here. I don't know if it's a test. I'm a little confused. If the next door that you open doesn't have Jafaki in it, I'm going back to my room and that's that. If you guys are messing with me, if this is here to humiliate me because you think you're tougher than I am, that's not gonna work for Mershon, okay? Mershon, <laughs> look at me. Do I look tough? No. Wait, okay, I get your point. Sorry. <laughs> but what about these two? What about these two uh these two slabs of meat you got? Oh, they are the best at sweeping and picking up dead bodies. That's what all those muscles are for. Okay, well. If the next door that we open up doesn't have Jafaki behind it and I don't get to beat his ass, it's, maybe it's going to be your dead bodies that you're sweeping up. And Trill giggles. Oh, wait, if we are dead, how would we sweep up our own dead bodies? <laughs> no, stop talking. <laughs> oh, right, right. Sorry. No, the makes He's just perfect pretty sense. pretty to look at. <laughs> yeah, Ma uh, Mag uh, briefly hefts Isthen and then uh, puts him back down. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so I imagine, does Ao lead the way down the hall? Uh, I think Troll leads the way at this point, oh, right? Oh, gosh. Yeah, I guess so. Whoops. <laughs> so as you're walking down this hallway, and with Mershon following behind you, it's this it's this large 10-foot wide hallway, like I said before, with like gouge marks all over the floors. It looks as though a number of enormous beasts have headed down this hallway at some point in the past. And you get to an intersection where there is a door leading off to the west, a set of double doors leading off to the west, and a set of double doors leading to the south. From my understanding of the map, if we go to the west, we end up back in the arena. So we want to go to the south. Giddy up. Sounds We're good. Just on a hope and a prayer here. And Mershon's looking really nervous at this point. He's he's never been in this hallway. He's, you know, been in that in that test chamber many, many times, like I said. 
but he's kind of looking back and forth like he's not really sure that you know what's going on, like what he's going on. He's uh, starting to make sort of aggressive faces to, to the four of you. It really seems like this is a breaking point for him. Martian, when I open this door, are you ready to challenge Jafaki? Yeah, and if you open that door and Jafaki's not in there, are you ready to get your ass beat by me? Oh, Marsha, what a ridiculous question. With all we've been through already? <laughs> so as Trill turns and looks at this double door leading off to the south, you see that it has, it's a beautifully ornate door with like bronze piping going all over it. Patterns showing, uh, showing almost like mathematical formulas inscribed in gold leaf all over the wood. And you see an enormous silver lock in the middle of the door. I think Ao could get the sense, looking at this lock, that if she were to try to pick it, the tumblers on it are so large that it would, there's no way to open this door without generating a lot of noise. And I think Mag looking at this door sees how reinforced it is. There's going to be no way for Mag to push this door open without bashing at it repeatedly, again, making tons of noise. What about that bag of holding? We got a key? We've got a big four-pronged key and a tarnished silver key. I see you're in the um, in the keys area. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we have, we have, um, there's like, yeah, I guess cop, copper key, round key. Perhaps Mag, um, pulls out the key ring. And... You see, she's a janitor. <laughs> um, I, uh, gosh, they always give us so many of these. Shh. Ale warns. <laughs> Lest another deception check come up. <laughs> <laughs> And, and I think, I mean, the, the thing about making noise is quite ominous because the, the Shanrigal behemoth, that's how it, it can't see anything, but it responds to like noise and tremors and things. So right. um, I don't think we want to just bash it. All right. Well, um, Mag will try uh, the... Well, let's talk four. about what the key, can we talk about what the keys are just so that everybody has a sense of what they are? Yeah, I would love some more info on the keys. So what keys do you have? We have a, a four pronged key. Okay. A tarnished silver key. Let, let's, let, sorry, sorry. I'm sorry, David. Can yeah, you try you to talk to... through the, the keys and tell me if you remember where you got them? Mm. Yes. Okay. The four pronged key. <laughs> That's where I am too, David. Okay. <laughs> yeah. This is this is the downfall of recording short episodes. With we've been we have not recorded a ton over the last month or so. It's been like a summer downtime for us. So, so uh, keys are from like two months ago. <laughs> yeah, you you listener are hearing about these keys maybe with more recent memory than our <laughs> players are. That's I awesome. wish there was a way, awesome. like in your inventory, to add a little note to things about when you got them. Right, and also that I'd done that a bunch. <laughs> um, all right, all right. So wait, okay. But the next one is is called the tarnished silver key. And of course, astute listeners will remember. The lock we're looking at is silver? Right. Okay. That's good. All right. And so then, okay. But all <laughs> joking aside, then we have the copper key, which of course... Um, Ooh. I just want to make it clear that what's happening right now is Mag is like sweatily looking at all of these keys. Jangle, jangle, as, jangle. As Mershon is bum, bum, like getting, bum, bum. It's, it's the scene in Boogie Nights where Alfred Molina is hanging out and the firecrackers keep getting set off in the in his room as Mark Wahlberg is doing the drug deal. Yeah. The, the the amazing scene in that movie God, at the end of the scene, thing. That's that what we're doing right insane. now. Ma I love that. Mag is the... um. The meme with the superhero and the two buttons. Uh, yes. Only there's <laughs> yeah. four buttons. Totally. And the buttons are keys. Is Can Mag see anything about the shape of the lock to, to uh, like, I, I gather it's it's silver and one of our keys is silver. We have a tarnished silver key. So, like, on that basis right now, that's the leading contender. Yeah. We have one, we have two that are described by 
um, by material and two that are described by shape. So is there any way for Mag to see whether there's anything round or for, for four-pronged well, the, about what's... The round key yeah. has a note saying uh, oh. that it's a round shaft tipped with several teeth of varying length. Okay. So that's going to help. All right. So can Mag can Mag sort of see anything about the lock exterior or, or interior? Um... Or not. So Mag like holds up this key to the lock. The four the four prong key. This is a this is like a normal lock. The the four the idea of a four prong thing fitting into this lock seems it's preposterous. Right, out. right. All right. So Mag is going to try the tarnished silver key, okay. and uh, yeah, and she mutters to herself, um, "Oh, it's um, oh yeah 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 yeah." And then, um, and then, uh, um, tentatively reaches it, the key forward and, um, inserts it into the lock. And Troll looks at Mersh and goes, you can't get good help these days. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The key, as Mag says, yeah, 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 slips into this enormous silver metal lock and you feel the key turn silently, nearly silently, just as it moves five tumblers in perfect unison and unlocks the door. <laughs> awesome. Hero. And I'm going to give Mag a hero point. I was going to yeah. say hero oh, point, yeah. Mag. <laughs> that was so tense. I love it. <laughs> like, like all of Mag's hero points, it's for guile. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you you solved the you have too many keys riddle. Uh, yeah. It was a the test. thing the thing is I think I would have let you solve that without any role play whatsoever if you had just said we're going to use the one key we haven't used yet. And then I would have been like, "Oh, you mean the silver key?" Uh, I don't no. know which key we've used and haven't used. It's been so I know, long. But I do. <laughs> I know. All right. So so um as as that um cl- as those tumblers click into place Mag says, uh, I guess she's been saying, yeah, 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 yeah. So she says, yep, yep, <laughs> yep. And pushes open the door. And the first thing that strikes you when you enter this room are shelves that extend from the floor way, 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 way up, 25 feet all the way to the ceiling. Oh, nice built in. They line, the, they line the walls all the way around this wide room. And on these shelves are countless glass bottles emitting smoke, holding clumps of slime that sort of twitch erratically from time to time. There's so many like little beakers and cylinders holding alchemical materials that there's like a hazy smoke filling the room. And on the southern wall, the one opposite the door that you enter in, it's the one part of the room that doesn't have shelves. And there's a big display case there. In that display case, behind where there, where there would be glass, but that glass has been shoved to the side, you see the dissected remains of several creatures. Mm. They're pinned there like rare and unusual specimens, but you notice that they're arranged in such a way that they're almost like making up in combination a single creature. The perfect fighter. It's hard to get a sense of all of the uh, strange arranged parts here, but your attention is immediately drawn to the head of a Morlock somehow kept alive through some mechanical means with tubes and wires coming out of it. And it's just screaming out a constant hoarse note, just going, (laughs) You also see a Sugathi here. They're an ancient looking worm creature. 16 feet long, hundreds of teeny tiny little legs, a gaping mouth with three barbed points around it, all of the Sugathi stuff. And just also like a Sugathi, there's a pair of tentacles on the far end away from its mouth, sort of 
twitching idly. Oh, cool. Awesome. But this Sugathi is wearing strange bandoliers filled with alchemical stuff. You're, you're not sure exactly what, what all of these things are as they slosh around on this creature's body, but there are little vials or elixirs or bombs or, or whatever it is strapped to this creature along with a rapier and a couple of wands. There's also a drider here. Oh, no. The upper body of a drow. Uh, you know, a subterranean elf with with pale bluish white skin, and the abdomens uh, and the abdomen and legs of a gargantuan spider. This one, unlike Lalazax, is male, and you see that its face and mouth are are twisted and strange, more spider like than elven. And as this door silently opens, you see this Sugathi that's working on this display case to the southern side of the room obsessively turning a half dozen or so of its uh, emerald eyes at this bizarre arrangement of body parts, prodding them with its millipede-like legs, uh, faintly moaning to itself as a long strand of drool struggles to escape its mouth. It's just like... Uh. They sort of idly comment back to the drider. Look at it. It's so close. She'll love it, right? You think she'll love it, don't you? And at this point, the drider on the northern side of the room turns back to see you. And the Sugathi turns to see you too. And it sees Mershin among the four of you. By the way, Eo's staying outside the door, so can't be seen, but... And Jafaki turns to Mershin and says, What are you doing in here, you idiot? <laughs> And we'll pick up from there next time. <laughs> oh, can't wait. That's so cool. This has turned out pretty fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wait, it's Jaf- it's Jafaki? That, oh, that's <laughs> Jafaki. I thought that was another researcher. of Ruin is a tabletop gold production produced under the Paizo Incorporated Community Use Policy using trademarks and copyrights owned by Paizo that are covered under that policy. Paizo does not recognize, endorse, or sponsor this project in any way, and we are expressly prohibited from charging you to use or access this content. For more information about Paizo Inc. and Paizo products, visit paizo.com. All original characters and content in the Roots of Ruin are the property of tabletop gold and all rights are reserved. We at Tabletop Gold would love to hear from you. On our website, tabletopgold.com, you can learn more about us and our shows, pick up great merch, and connect to the best online community in all of podcasting. Thanks for listening.